everybody, it's Diana with StampingWithDye.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Santan Valley, Arizona. Hopefully you don't get tired of hearing me say that. I just assume that sometimes there's new people and you don't know where I'm at. So I might say it from here on, I might forget too. But um, I want to welcome you to this week's Dye's Shorts and have a cute Christmas card um, for you. I think it's cute. And, um, I want to, um, say, hey, I see some of you popping in and I'm going to, um, flip over here really quick and check the group, make sure that I'm in the right spot and I can see my mug. There's that short haired mug. I keep like trying to fluff it up. <laughs> I keep teasing Jeff and I'm like, remember when I had long hair? So, um, it just seems like there's nothing back there. So, it, especially when I turn my head, I really notice it. So, I just keep pulling it, pulling it out here. But anyways, um, and, and this, and Marcy, this is when I wash it and don't do anything with it. It just kind of does its own little, <clears throat> whatever it likes to do. So, I didn't even blow dry it or anything. So, um, but it is what it is. So I'm going to show a really cute card. I had hoped that, um, my pre-order was going to be here. It's on its way, but I keep doing the follow your order kind of thing. And I'm like, Ooh, it's not going to be here in time for my video. So maybe he'll bang on the door during. And, um, so I will just wait till Tuesday. And cause I was just going to pick out a few, um, few of my favorite things to show, not like unbox the whole thing like I did the cute little cutter yesterday or the dye machine, the mini boss. Um, that was too fun. So um, I'm going to turn the camera and show you the fun little card I have planned for you today. All right, so hold on, hold on. Around and around we go. Where she stops, nobody knows. All right. I'm like, come on, you don't want to look at my notes. All right, so here we go. Cute, cute. Hopefully you can see. All right, all right, so you can see my hands. So that's good. This is December's host code. I'm pretty good about, about mentioning it. So I'll put it here. It'll probably get in my way. All right, so today I'm going to be using the stitched nested label dies and these are so cute they have stitches they're a fun i don't even know what kind of shape that is but they're just a fun fun die to add a little bit of um cuteness to your card and they come in a bunch of different shapes i'm also going to use gnome for the holidays because they are so adorable and the holidays are almost past us and I'm also using the Buffalo check and this is a great year-round stamp to use so let me stick those behind me on my table all right so now I have the Buffalo check in wood so this is how I use the um use the set. All right. So I'm actually standing up and then I'll sit down after, but, um, all right. So I, you can see I've got like, cause I've been using it. So I'm using my memento. So I'm getting it inked up really good. And the secret is you want to have a good inked up pad as well. So, because you have a lot of, um, solid pieces in the stamp and I kind of give it a little, not a big twist, but as I'm stamping, I give it just a tiny little twist and then it seems to get the um, ink into the stamp even better. So get her good and inked. Now, if you had this where it was, it's on the wood, you could use your Stamparatus as well and get, um, and you could do it a couple times. But I'm just making sure that it's really, really inked. All right, then what I do is I have my piece of a real red cardstock. Now this is three and three quarter by five is the size of this. And I am just going to lay it on my stamp. 
Then I'm going to take whatever, whatever adhesive you have. I still have snail, so I'm using snail just to get, get it gone. Then I'm going to take one of my little cute Stamparatus grid sheets. You could use copy paper, whatever. Now I'm laying that on there, and then I'm giving it a good rub. And this is going to get the ink all over the place on my paper. And don't be quick with it. Like, give it a good rub. Because you want that ink to get itself stuck into the cardstock. Sometimes we stamp too quick. Sometimes we hardly give the ink time to, like, get stuck into the paper and we already pull it aside. So, you know, I'm just making sure that that ink is getting itself really stuck onto the paper. All right. Then when I peel it away, that snail brings that paper. So see the paper is stuck. And then I'm going to move this away so I don't get my arm in it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside to dry because I'm going to be doing other stuff. So, so if you're doing a whole bunch of cards, you know, you would do the next one and then you would have these all over your table drying. All right. So I'm going to set that aside and then I'm just going to bring a new piece over so that I can start stamping. All right, so now I want my piece of crumb. So this is crumb cake, and I'm using real red and basic black cardstock as well as um, Whisper White Thick because, of course, I'm using my blends. All right, so I want to stamp the little house on my um, crumb cake. So I'm just using my um, memento. Da -da -da -da. And a lot of times this is how I do. I stamp them like this. Then I can see that I've, I've stamped all in the place. All right, so I'm going to scoot it down about here. So I stamped my little house. All right, now that's going to set aside. Then what I did was I stamped my my little girl gnome and my little boy gnome on a piece of Whisper White Thick. And I did this earlier just because I like them to be to sit a little bit before I start to color on them. That way I know for sure they're they're super super dry. Just in case. All right. Another thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of basic black cardstock and I'm going to use my Whisper White pad. So this is the old style, so you have to open up the old way. And I'm going to stamp my greeting on my black cardstock. Now you could, um, you could emboss this, you know, and make it stick out, but I'm just stamping this greeting several times around. And then just like the real red paper with the buffalo check, I'm going to set it aside and let that dry because that, wh that um, white craft ink will air dry on its own. If you don't have time, you can heat set it. Or like I said, you could emboss it with some embossing powder, but... I'm just going to let it dry on its own while I color my little people. All right, so let me get my, my inks here going on. Now, I saw a card, oh my gosh, forever, forever ago. You know how you, you look on Pinterest and you see cards and you, you set them aside that you know you're going to make them? So that was what I did. Now, it wasn't this stamp set, but it's basically the same layout. And it's by Paula Dobson, and I think she's New Zealand. So, um, so that's basically where I got the idea for this super, super cute little card. All right, so let's start coloring our little gnomes. Now, I'm pretending that these gnomes are the Santa and Mrs. Claus in Gnomeville. All right, so there is that. So this was just light, flirty flamingo. I'm gonna scoot down just a little bit. So hopefully you can see. I have, I see a little shadow, but I think it's just on my phone. 
because it looks okay when I look at online. All right, so I'm just going to color. Now this is just a light petal pink. I'm just filling in any areas, but then they have that healthy little glow that I always give my my little people, right? My little critters, my little people, all my little things always start with that healthy glow and the gnomes aren't any different. All right, so we're gonna have some red. So we have our light soft suede. So I'm going to have some red coming in here. So I'm going to put that soft suede in here i hope that now whenever you guys color with the red you get your soft suede out first i hope i have at least taught you that out of the couple times or a hundred times that you've seen me color all right and then the little girl's dress mrs claus is going to be red as well so i'm going to add some of that on there hey sister and we've got a few people. So we have Diana and Marcy and Jackie. Let's see, who else have I missed? That's all I could see right now. Okay. Oh, and then look at that. Crazy. The screen looks kind of weird. All right, but I'm just going to keep going. So let's see here. Sometimes I think it's this paper. The lines, I think, sometimes mess with the with the digital something something. All right, so I'm wherever I'm going to put red, I have put light soft suede. Then I'm going to take my dark real red. So hopefully wherever you are, you have a fun weekend planned. Jeff, oh, look, I went right out of the line in my crazy coloring. I get that little bit of a jitter like, I don't know, it's like a little spaz or something. And it did it right there. All right. So I'm just coloring the little red. I am not coloring the little mistletoe hanging from his hat because I'm going to cut it away. So I'm not even going to color that. Because these guys are already married. They don't need the mistletoe. They're already in love. They've done enough kissing. They don't need to have any reason because they're busy making cookies and toys for all the little gnomes at Christmas time. All right, so this is the dark, real red. I know I always have to have a story going on with my little people. All right, so then I do my light, real red, and I just fill in that space easy easy peasy lemon squeezy all right and same with down here she is so cute and i had i hardly did anything with her which is so sad because she's adorable all right so now i'm going to take my green so this is the granny apple green hey teddy hey ann and jade's here hi jade my sweet little pretend daughter niece all right so we have i'm using dark granny apple and light granny apple and i want to have his hat is going to be almost like a candy cane you know with the red and the green so i'm putting the dark on one side I also want his little dress or his gown, I guess you would call it. It could be a dress. It could be his sleeping, sleeping dress, right? And then the little tree. So I'm going to come up here with the dark. Just from the tops of each section, we'll have the dark because the overhang of the one above would give it some shadow. So super cute. And these are so, like some people don't like to color, but really these guys are pretty quick. They're pretty quick. Now if you're doing 200, hey Becky, if you're doing 200 cards, you know, you might've wanted to start coloring back in April, but if you're just doing a few, 
it doesn't take that long. And like I said the other day, this is, you know, you decide what you're going to do the closer it gets to Christmas in regards to cards. Like, you might just do these in a solid color. You might not color them this many colors. So you just decide. Maybe you're just going to make 10 of these and then it's easy. You got some special people on your list that you know will appreciate the time that you took. Some people don't don't necessarily, I don't think it's because they don't appreciate it. They just don't understand when they get a Christmas card from you that you made that it takes some time. So that's why sometimes some people will get a more elaborate card than others. And it's not because you love them less. It's just because, you know, Toby Stott, you know that, you know, certain people are going to get it, right? They're going to get it. I'm hashtagging with my, with my fingers. Toby, we're not going to be barking. I wasn't going to put him out here, but then he's so pathetic in the house. But it's probably my order, so it's the UPS man. All right, so this is just mango, dark mango. So I'm going to put it on his little pant legs. Toby. Oops. He... Okay, thank you. Oh, I don't really need to go to the door. He's just telling me it's here. All right. So then I'm going to put a little bit. Toby Gibbs. And then just a little bit here. All right. So, but, all right. So one thing I want to show you is... All right, so his little, oh, so his little beard. All right, so I have this thing right here is basically just a block that you stamp, you know, you stamp your little, your little people on. And what I've done is I've put a piece of paper underneath here. First, I, I type, type shadow block on it, and then it's just glued onto the back of the um, block. And this just stays with my um, my blends. Because sometimes you want a color that's even lighter. Like going granite, or going granite. Gray granite is pretty light, but sometimes it's still a little bit too dark. So what I do is I take my dark gray granite and I'm going to scribble some dark gray granite on my shadow block. And then I take my color lifter. Now this one I have written shadow because this one I know that this is the one I use to move color around. So um, so then it gives me a lighter color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. Let me move this up just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm taking my um, color lifter and I'm just going over and I'm picking up some of that gray granite and then I'm just going to color his beard. But now his beard has barely any color on it. But it's still not totally white. So same with her little skirt or her little apron. Now it's a little smaller area, so you just have to be careful. But I wanted it to have some color, but I didn't want it overpowered with the color. And then you just kind of go like this and the color comes off of it. But I like to always have one um, marked, and then I just know like this is this is the one I do that for. That way, if it has any residual um, color on it, if I'm using it to to correct any boo boos that you do with a color lifter, you're not going to go, oh gosh, now I've added red, you know, because before it was um, used a color before. So I always just write that on there, and then this. Um, little shadow block, it kind of, it stays on there, but if you want it to clean off, I just have, I have like some of the thieves spray or, um, any of the, just because I can spray it and it's got that alcohol kind of stuff in it and it will clean the block off. But if, um, I don't clean it off till I know, like, cause I can tell that that's gray and I don't want to waste that, um, because if I'm going to use a shadow next time and I go, oh, I'm going to use gray again, then I don't need to keep cleaning it off. But if I know like, oh, last time I used red and I've got red on there, then I would want to clean it off. But, um, so I'll just, you know, leave that on there till the next time. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out 
my little critters. Now, what I did do was ahead of time, I did cut the little girl out because what you want to do when you're cutting, you want to move whatever you're cutting. So you don't want to like move your scissors all over the place. Basically, you just squeeze the scissors and move the paper. So I'm squeezing my scissors and I'm moving my paper and that makes cutting go so much faster. All right, so I'm just going to finish cutting out this little guy. He's so cute. And you can see I cut the mistletoe off of his hat. Because it is, it can be a pain to cut out. And I didn't want to mess with it. So, all right. So Jeff went to the hardware store. Because I was like, oh, maybe you should wait. Because the UPS guy will come. Sure enough, he did. All right, I can hear my order out there going, take me inside, play with me. All right, so there we go. So we have our little people already, already cut out, ready to go. Now, you may not, let me get the card going over here. All right, so you might not like to see the white. So let me show you what I mean. So now I have this piece, it's all the way dried. Now I'm going to throw that piece of paper in the garbage. All right, now I have my crumb cake is my card base. I have pieces all over the place. Let me put my blends in the tub because I don't need them anymore. All right, that way they're out of the way. Okay, so we have our little crumb cake. But what I want to do is on my real red, I want this to be like here. So I'm just kind of visualizing where I want my little um, nested die. So then I'm just going to stick it onto my card. And like I said, I'm using old adhesive and you can do the same thing. All right. So I want it on here, but I want, to, I don't want it to be all the way on. Like I am going to cut off some of the tree. So this looks good. And then I just need to cut that off of there. Then just flip it over and cut off the overhang. All right. And then I want to put it on basic black. I liked it to have a little bit of a darkness around it. So I'm going to put that on the basic black. Oh my gosh, my hands are so shaky. Sometimes I drink, it's like a Hills Brothers cappuccino. It's like a Werther's candy on the front of it. Sometimes I'm fine. Other times, like today, look at my hands, they're all shaky. Other times it makes me so jittery. That's why I don't drink coffee. So it's just weird how sometimes it does this. All right, so I'm going to take the twine. Now it does not come on these, but I have a lot of old um, bobbins and I just put them on there because it looks so cute, but it doesn't come like that from Stampin' Up. All right, so I'm going to put my twine on there, trim my edge. All right, so I want my twine to be up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I have my, my edge there. Then I'm going to flip it over and kind of hold these taut. And then I'm going to take scotch tape. I think that's my scotch tape gets used so much and nobody knows there's scotch tape back here, but that's just going to hold my twine in place. And then I'm just going to tie a bow. And then what I do is I go like one and then two. So there's actually like, do it like two times. And what that does is it holds your thread in place. And I remember years ago when I was a, when I first started stamping up and they had me help them during a convention. And that was one of the things they taught us and I remember we had these tall, tall table, tables and we would just stand in the, 
in the center of them and we would help everybody with their make and takes. But I remember that was one of the things they taught us was just do that extra little thing or whatever and it just holds your, your thread in place. All right, so there is that. And then I'm going to put my little people on there. But before I put them on there, so this is what I meant. You might not like that you see the white around them. See how you can kind of see the white um, edge around them. So if you don't like to see that, what you can do is I'm going to take my little gnomes and I'm going to take my dark gray granite and I'm just going to take the, the um, pen side and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to trace them. So I'm just going to trace them and what happens is that cut edge will suck up that ink and then it will make your white edge not show because it sucks up your your ink so you just trace it and um and if you go right on it you can do that too but this to me it may it it and then i'm gonna go here too right where this little white is i'm gonna go in there um but i found if you trace it it doesn't take as much because you can hold it up and, and go like this. But to me, it's just easier if you just trace it. But that's going to soften that white edge around so you don't really see it. And if you do the lighter color, it's not as obvious. You know, it's not so dark. So, and if you've got, if you're using pool party, if you're doing the background as a pool party, you could do a pool party. All right, so see how that, now when I lay it over here, da, 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 now when I lay it over here, you don't see that white edge. So it just softens that, that edge. All right, so let's put the card together. So I have my piece of crumb, and then I'm going to attach my card, card front. Where is my glue dots? All right, so then I'm just using glue dots because I have that twine behind there. So it doesn't let me have the paper really butt up against the paper. So this just makes it a little better. All right, so I scooted up a little bit. I seemed like I was too close to the, to the foam. My fingers look huge. All right, so I'm sticking that on there. And then we're going to put our little gnomes. So I'm going to use dimensionals. And these are little gnomes. So I'm just using the baby ones. Just so I can put more on there and get all the nooks and crannies covered. And you could put a big one down there in her skirt, but... It seems like I have more baby ones always in the ready to go than I do the big ones. All right, so let's put our card together. Oh, Connie, hey Connie, how are you? All right, I hope that every time I do a video, even if I always seem to color, you at least learn one thing on all my videos. So even if it's just something that I taught before, but you might have forgot or something. All right, so I put my little guy on there, my little Santa gnome. We're gonna just pretend he's Santa. And then Mrs. Claus gnome, she's gonna go here. She's so cute. And then I have my, my little um, gnome saying, so they're nice and good and dry. So I'm just going to cut that with my scissors. And these are the old scissors. I have some for paper and some for ribbon. But I like that it's nice. It's just a big, long cut. So it's a little easier to be straight with the long scissor. So I just go stoop like that. All right. So that's going to go right there. I need to trim just a tad. All right get that off of there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use dimensionals. So it pops off the card. 
and stick that greeting under there. But they are so cute. And I love buffalo, that buffalo background. All right, so this is just going to go here. So her little foot is kind of over the greeting. Super fun. And then we have to add some snowflakes. So the adhesive back snowflakes. Oh, I love, love, love. So I'm going to put some snowflakes on here as well. And they just add some cute whimsy to the card. So I'm also putting one right here on this saying. Sure I am, Diana. Right here. And one over here. So isn't that cute? Isn't that the cutest little card? Oh my gosh. So here's the one I was looking at. Because I always do one ahead of time. So I did make some changes. So you can see. So this one I did a little bit of stitching. So again, like the other day, you can always, um, if you have more time, you can do different things. So this one I added some gel pen stitching. And then I had her um, apron as green. But after I did it, I was like, well, if I do her apron as green, the holly didn't pop as much. So I wanted her apron to be just a, a white apron. So I changed that. And then, um, oh, so one thing I didn't do was the Winkostella. We have to have some Winkostella. So I'm going to put a little bit of the Winkostella on the ornament center. I love the little Winkostella. And I also want to put some on her hat. Now I've seen some cute cards where people actually, let me show you. I'll do it to this one. Now, I promise she won't feel this at all. She totally didn't feel that at all. All right. But now you have this fun little tree. So let me cut this out. So now you have this cute little tree. Cut, cut, cut. And then you can do the same thing where you take your blends and knock down the edges of the white. And don't drink any cappuccino things before the next video. Good grief, Diana. I am so shaky. It's just weird how it does it. So I'm just thinking like... I must put more in one than the other. But now look at you have a cute little tree. So, you know, you could put a tree somewhere on your card. Look how cute a little tree would be back there. But anyway, so see, you could cut her little hat off and then you have a tree. Now this one I did on the inside. So I did the holly jelly everything and then I did the other gnome. And on the back... I did on the back too. So you always want to put your name on the back that you made it. And then I just put one on there. Oh my gosh, my shirt does match. Jackie, I didn't even catch that. Look at that. I could say I planned it, but I totally didn't. Oh my golly golly. All right. So that is um, the fun, cute little card for today. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll go, you know what? I'm going to make a couple of those for Christmas. There's still time. There's still time. I would think this weekend though is a weekend that you're going to want to get, you know, things in the mail. I know Stampin' Up! has said December the 9th, if you're placing an order and you want it for Christmas, they're suggesting the 9th. There's still no guarantee that you'll get it, but um, like, especially if it's a present, if you just you know, don't need it necessarily for Christmas. You don't have to, um, hey, Virginia. Um, you know, but they just are suggesting that this year, because I know, you know, things are just a little slower. There's a lot, like people are mailing more stuff. And, um, you know, we even saw that with the, with the, um, our pre-order as demonstrators. It took just a little bit longer because there was like more people ordering and stuff like that. So just, you know, keep that in mind. And um, enjoy your
here, little gnomes. They're so cute. And um, all right, have a good weekend, everyone. And um, I will see you Tuesday with the Teach Me Tuesdays. And I will be showing some new stuff because my pre-order is outside. I gotta go get it. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.